so um, I'm done till after lunch. Got some got some uh, other work to do over there. I'll talk to you about that in a second. So this is how I had the camera set mounted on the uh, front of the uh, tractor. So it was probably very bouncy, more bouncy than I uh, wanted it to be. So hope uh, if I'm mounted a little bit farther forward next time, it'll probably work better. So I put these in there. All right, so let's go take a look back here. What's going on? And uh, I can talk about it. So let me turn this around. All right, there we go. Now I got it working right. So now down over here, the mulch isn't quite as thick. Um, I'll add more to it in the winter time, but there was a bunch of uh, straw and, uh, and cardboard and other stuff I'd rotor tilled in. So that's why I didn't put it on as thick as I did down here. I put the two containers here over by the uh, the apple trees to try to give them some sort of wind block. Um, the uh, short I did yesterday on the uh, tornado warning that we had and the way the wind was coming around here and just whipping the crap out of that. And of course there are a bunch of uh, branches down over there. Kick this over, level this out. So I want to protect the trees a little bit. I don't want to totally, you know, brace them up. So they, you know, they basically, if I totally brace them up with uh, poles and everything, they become weak and they can't, uh, they don't um, build their uh, trunks up and roots up as good. So along here, I'm at uh, a good 10 inches, a little more over there, but a good 10 inches high here, all over here. What, I'm got, what I got to do here later on, I need to get all the straw out of here and into the cage. And then I'll uh, take it over there across the street like I did the other one and dump it over there. I'm not sure which part of the, which bales of straw had the um, graze on in it, but it appeared that there was a little bit of graze on it, which was affecting the uh, um, uh, butternut squash. And so when I took, when I raked it all off so it, that it would stop leaching through it and washing the graze on out, um, they started doing a lot better. So I'm just going to go ahead and haul this out there to the field. When I do the, um, the October burn out there, I'll burn it up with the, all the pieces of lilac that are out there. And that should destroy the graze on. Plus, it's going to be out there where all I'm going to be planting anyways is going to be um, like uh, sorghum, uh alfalfa and stuff like that where it's uh the graze on it's not going to affect it so in a couple of years it'll wash out wash down through the soil and be out of the out of the uh, surface stuff here so yeah i gotta do some work out here get this cleaned up bring a bunch of chips out here as well and then work my way uh, around the corner there with chips up against the front of the house as well then i need to get this thing here um i'm gonna block it up uh, which means I'm going to have to loosen up the, uh, the coupler there and the coupler over there. Take that straight piece off, lift it up, put down um, eight, um, not eight, uh, 12 um, like um, pavers, the 12 by 12 pavers underneath here. So I'm going to use uh, three on this side, three on the other side, double stack them, lift it up, throw a bunch of... Uh, bark around it and stuff, uh, bark, uh, the chips and stuff around it to do it. I need to cut this here down a little bit so I can bring the uh, mulch in here. Uh, and I'm going to mulch all the way out down over the edge onto the grass here. And that way uh, this will all start to uh, hopefully um, be ready to be rotor tilled in and do, uh, you know, become better soil by uh, next end of next spring, and then after I road shell, and I'll put more, put a thinner layer of uh, chips on top of it, and hopefully the piles out there will start uh, composting good. So I'll just be able to add good compost to it, and just turn this into a good uh, garden area as well. So that's what we got done here so far. Um, let's uh, 
Yeah, pumpkins are doing good still. The trees didn't take much damage. I don't see, uh, I didn't see any pieces of um, branches breaking off of any of these this time around. So these are uh, strengthening up pretty good. Uh, and now I just need to reset the uh, sprinklers out here, put uh, spread, set three sprinklers out here. So when I turn them on, they water the entire area, help the, uh, the wood chips decompose, water the pumpkins and the trees. And I see a couple more big pumpkins in there. I got a whole bunch of uh, blossoms over here on this one. This one here is really starting to take off now. Uh, I was getting a lot of water and has bark around and stuff. So this one's doing really good as well too. Alrighty, so get your own prepper garden going. Stay happy no matter what life throws at you. Even if your garden fails the first year, you can learn from it and learn what to do the following year. Because if you don't learn how to do a garden right, when the poop hits the fan and you have to really depend on your garden, you're not going to have the skills to keep it going. So learn now, get it in the ground, learn what works, doesn't work in your area. Uh, start um, storing water, uh, whatever type of containers you can store it in, store it in. Uh, store more food. If you can find uh, like meat on sale um, or find a place where you can uh, get a uh, quarter or half or a whole cow, don't just freeze it, can it. Because if power goes out, anything in the freezer has a, has a danger of it going bad, especially if it's a long uh, term power outage. If it's canned, it's shelf stable for at least five years, probably more, depending on you, how well you do it right. And so learn new skills, learn how to do all these things, all right?